Problem 5. A company states the standard deviation of minutes worked per day is 6.2 minutes. A group of workers claims that the figure is incorrect. A sample of 20 time cards has a sample standard deviation of 7.6 minutes. Use alpha equals 0 0.05 and the p-value method. Okay, so as I go back to the beginning, it says a company states that the standard deviation is 6.2 minutes. So off to the side, I'm going to write sigma equals 6.2. A group of workers claims the figure is incorrect. So incorrect means not the same, it's different. And so I have not equal to for the claim. So the claim is going to be an H1. A sample of 20, so 20 is my sample size, n equals 20, had a sample standard deviation of 7.6. So that's my s. s equals 7.6. Okay, so now I need to go back and fill in the rest of my null and alternate hypothesis. And since my population parameter can only be sigma, mu, or p, meaning a standard deviation, a proportion, or a mean, and all we have information about is the standard deviation, then I'm going to take the population standard deviation information and fill in sigma equals 0.62. And if I have sigma and 6.2 in the null hypothesis, the alternate has to have the same symbol and numeric value. Now I'm ready to find the test statistic. Because I'm studying a standard deviation, my test statistic is chi-squared equals n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared. So filling in my values, n is 20. You might write just 19 instead of 20 minus 1. I'm just doing it for clarity. s was 7.6. Don't forget to square that. And we'd already written sigma 6.2 off to the side, but remember we can always steal it from h naught the null hypothesis, and so 6.2 squared. Entering this into my calculator, I get 28.5494, etc. And going with a two-digit test statistic, I've got 28.55 because of rounding. That 9 followed the 4, causing it to round up. Okay, I need to find the p-value method, which is in the question. So for the p-value method, we start with the test statistic, which in our case, remember our test statistic is chi-squared equals 28.55. And I start with the test statistic, and I need to look for this, I need to find it, sorry, on the chi-squared table. Now, why did I say the chi-squared table? Because we just found a chi-squared test statistic. So I'm going to go to row 19, because we need to go to row n minus 1. And as I read across row 19, I see a 27 number, a 30 number, underneath columns 0 0.10 and 05. And remember, we're looking for our test statistic of 28.55, which is in between these two figures. So I read straight up and get an initial p-value of 0.10 to 0.05, or 10 cents to a nickel. That seems easier for some people. Um, I need to put an inequality symbol in between that, and since 10 cents is greater than 5 cents, I would be using the greater than symbol. But, wait, it's a two-tailed test, so we need to double those values. Why do I say it's a two-tailed test? Yes, because the alternate hypothesis has not equal to, so it's a two-tailed test. So multiplying my existing p-value by 2, I'm really looking at 20 cents to 10 cents, 0.20 to 0.10. 20 cents is greater, and so for my p-value, 0.20 greater than the p-value greater than 0.10. Now I need to decide whether I'm going to reject or fail to reject H0. The rule of thumb is if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. So is a range of 10 to 20 cents compared to a 
alpha, a significance level of 0.05, it is not less than, so I do not reject. I will be failing to reject H0. Fail to reject H0. Now remember, it's always H0 in the reject or fail to reject statement. Even though the claim might be H1, the alternate hypothesis, it's always the existing fact that's being challenged or supported, but it's the existing fact that would be rejected or failed to reject. And so now I need to go write my final conclusion. My claim is H1 and I fail to reject H0. So I will start off with, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, ugh, this is a hard one because you go up top and it just says claims that the figure is incorrect. Remember, I don't just want to use that exact verbiage. I need to be stating what parameter, what value, and specifically about the claim. And I want to include some context. So I might need to reread everything. It's talking about standard deviation of minutes worked per day. And so I'm going to finish my sentence with, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation of minutes worked per day is not 6.2 minutes. Now maybe instead of not, you said different from. Um, incorrect might be hard English language wise to work it in, but I'm sure you could. But remember, I'm making sure that you have the parameter standard deviation listed. The claim about the standard deviation is, is not a particular value. And what value is it not equal to? 6.2 minutes. And then the context. What is the standard deviation referring to? Minutes worked per day.